Hi everyone, it's Dr. Brian Curtis, one of the paleontologists here at Fossil Crates. And today I'm here to talk to you about Rabakisaurus garris bay. Now I have to apologize, I'm not 100% sure that's how you pronounce the name. Uh, Rabakisaurus recently has come under scrutiny in terms of how it was even meant to be pronounced. And I haven't heard it with my ear. But based on what I've seen, Rabakisaurus is pretty close and that's what others have said as well. So I'm rolling with Rabakisaurus. Either way, this stylized Rabakisaurus behind me uh, replete with a cool looking red head and tail accents and spikes down its tail. It may or may not have had spikes, but it is a good representation of these smaller sized sauropods. Rabakisaurus came from uh, Africa in the, around 100 million years ago, so in the late Cretaceous, but the front end of the late Cretaceous. It only had teeth in the front of its mouth. What's really neat about Rabakisaurus and its cousins, the Rabakisaurids, one of which is known as Lamaesaurus, which is in Argentina, and indicates that there was a land bridge between Africa and Argentina in the Cretaceous, because they're very similar looking animals, is they have the diplodocid teeth at a time when Titanosaurus flourished. So just like when the diplodocids lived amongst the supergiants like the Brachiosaurus in the late Jurassic, they were able to survive in the Southern Hemisphere coexisting with other large animals. And one of the main reasons is their teeth. So the teeth of the Rabakisaurus are look like pencils. You can see here, very pencil-like. And uh, the teeth themselves, let me give you two in the Ultimate Herbivore Kit, because they're small. Uh, they were in the front of the mouth only. So here's the jaw of the Diplodocus, and it has the teeth, even though this is the whole jaw where you'd expect teeth, the teeth are only up in here in the front half. The same goes for the top of the skull. There's the Diplodocus skull up top, Again, the teeth are only in the front half. As you go farther back, the teeth are no longer present. Now this skull, we believe our Bacchus will be similar. So its eyes are up, are right over in here. And its nose is up on top of its head. So it's sticking its snout all day long, raking leaves. Recently a paper came out proposing that Rabakisaurus had an extra large gut. The Rabakisaurus, is, as I believe it to be, is no more than 50 feet long and around 10 tons, very light for a sauropod. And I say that in contrast to a number of other studies that had come out earlier or guesstimations on size is because they quite often are looking at the height of the Robachysaurus backbone. And what's fascinating is, and you can kind of see it on my illustration here, duck, duke, and jive, that tall area here, this is all designed out of the tops of the spines. So Robachysaurus had, like many diplodocids, very tall dorsal spines. The difference is, in the diplodocids, they're bifid, they're bifurcate, so they look like a V, and they get very tall. However, Rabakisaurus is not. It is one straight, basically an eye, sitting up on top of the centrum. And this can reach four feet tall, which is a crazy height for dorsal vertebra, and why some of the early interpretations were based on the height of the vertebra, this animal must be supergiant. The reality is the centrum, the body of the vertebra, is not particularly large. And so it indicates an animal had a very tall spine or a very tall back. So some interpretations are that it had a spine, like Spinosaurus and Auranosaurus, both of which lived in the same area around the same time. So what was going on then to cause for a spine to be needed like that or be selectively uh, selected for? I don't know, but it is something of interest that you find three different animals from three different groups of dinosaurs, all having the same sale solution, reminiscent of Dimetrodons and Adaphosaurus from the Permian. So Robachysaurus has this tall spine that's every bit as tall as a Patasaurus, but a Patasaurus is a giant animal, 30, 40 tons potentially. When you look at the rest of the Robachysaurus skeletal elements, including the size of just the centrum, they're much smaller than an Apatosaurus. It's a much more gracile sauropod. So 10 tons would make it heavier than every meat-eating dinosaur, pretty much every hadrosaur, but maybe one or two. It is actually very light for a sauropod. Now, the time that it lived in, it clearly did well. It managed to get out into South America and stayed late into South America too. So the Robachysaurs were living amongst the titanosaurs and all of their various giantness. And it's because the titanosaur teeth are very different than the Robachysaur teeth. So you, here you have an animal behind me that's eating a different kind of plant and therefore is able to coexist with other giant herbivores. So Rabakisaurus, pretty cool, uh, likely had a whipped tail, uh, 
illustrated here is a whip tail, which would have been used for defense. So it has size on its side if it wanted to be safe, as well as a cool tail. The animal itself is still something of an enigma, though more, pop, more material has been discovered. But the uh, complete, nice, articulated skeleton we all hope for, haven't found it yet on this one. But people are looking every year, so it's just a matter of time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of information about Robachysaurus. Please like, subscribe, and leave any comments below. And we look forward to bringing you more material soon. Thank you kindly. Adios.